and let us all that we can to build a better future. Uh, recently, we did talk about what happened to uh, Steven Donziger. For those of you who don't know, Steven Donziger is a true hero. He's the only, uh, he's, he's one of the few people that actually stand up to big oil and actually make them uh, held accountable for their actions. And what was his reward? Well, his reward was, again, two years plus for house arrest, and now he was sentenced six months, uh, for, uh, six months for jail time. So that's his reward. But now, uh, this is an article from The Nation. Is Chevron's vendetta against Stephen Donziger finally backfiring? So let's talk about it. Stephen Donziger, the human rights lawyer who spent nearly three decades fighting Chevron on behalf of 30,000 people in the Ecuadorian rainforest, has been sentenced to six months in federal prison for criminal contempt. On October 1st, in, lower, in the lower Manhattan federal courtroom, Judge Loretta Preska justifies imposing the maximum penalty by asserting that Donziger, now 60, had not shown uh, contrition. Uh, she said it seems that only the proverbial two by four between the eyes will install in him any respect for the law. Again, this is a private corporation that let this happen. And that was basically, again, being the major complaint towards Stephen Donziger. In May, Prescott had found Donziger guilty after a trial without a jury. And now Donziger, along with his family and scores of supporters, had to listen to the federal judge compare him to a mule who needed to be beaten with a piece of wood before complying. Prior to sentencing, Donziger reminded the court in a polite and at times emotional statement that he already spent 700... <clears throat> 787 days under house arrest in his New York City apartment, a confinement that had put great pressure on his wife and teenage son. He explained that the court imposed restrictions meant that his son had a father who was unable to travel, leave his home, except under narrow exceptions, with court permission 48 hours in advance, unable to even go out for a dinner, unable to have a father capable of doing all the things a father can do and should do with a child, including act with spontaneity. But even though Donziger was facing prison, he told the court he would not back down. I have been attacked and demonized for years by Chevron in retaliation for helping indigenous people in Ecuador try to do something to save their cultures, their lives, and our planet in the face of massive oil pollution. That's a context for why we are here today. In response, Preska read out a prepared 15-minute statement for a harsh sentence. Mr. Donziger spent... The last seven plus years, thum thumbing his nose at the U.S. judicial system, she said, now it's time to pay the piper. Again, I just want to remind everyone that Judge Prescott kind of has some shady connections with Chevron. Again, we also covered last week on our Thursday show where, again, 100 federal judges failed and broke the law to recuse themselves from cases that they are also attached to as well. Seems like Judge Prescott is in with that crowd as well. Our law system is corrupt. The judicial system the political system, our corporate media. Again, it's downright sickening. Continuing on, Donziger will not go to jail or go to prison immediately. His attorneys challenge the criminal contempt conviction, and they will also ask a higher court to put off his prison sentence pending the appeal. But Presco will keep him under house arrest, once again calling him a flight risk. In the past, she has warned that he has ties to Ecuador, insinuating that he would abandon his family and his New York City apartment to go live in the rainforest. I mean, again, that is downright disgusting for a judge to even say this. Again, this man has spent 787 days under house arrest. I doubt even Judge Prescott can even do that for one minute. See, again, Prescott's doing this because, again, as we've talked before, Corporations have the final say in our judicial system and in our political system. We see their ads on corporate media. Preska, Judge Preska, is being a good, loyal foot soldier to the establishment. Continuing on, you can't understand this latest injustice without looking back at Chevron's long campaign against Donziger, who again won a landmark pollution case against the oil giant in Ecuadorian courts in 2013. Chevron was ordered to spend 9.5 billion to clean up a contaminated area the size of Rhode Island and to pay for the health care of 30,000 plaintiffs whose communities have seen a high number of cancer cases. Instead of following the legal order, Chevron launched a case in New York and in 2014 a federal judge, Lewis Kaplan, found Donziger and some of his Ecuadorian allies civilly liable for racketeering, bribery, and fraud. Then Kaplan asked the federal prosecutor for the Southern District of New York to put Donziger on trial for criminal contempt connected to the original conviction. The federal prosecutor refused, so Kaplan handpicked an attorney from a private firm, Rita Gavlin, to prosecute a nearly unprecedented legal maneuver. 
As Chevron's vendetta continued, international outrage grew. Just before senten sentencing, the United Nations High Commi uh, Commissioner for Human Rights issued an opinion in Donziger's favor, ruling that his two years of house arrest was illegal under international law and that he had been denied the right to a fair trial. A panel of five prominent jurists called the confinement uh, arbitrary and said that both judges, Kaplan and Preska, had shown a staggering lack of objectivity and impartiality. In court, Preska briefly acknowledged the UN findings only then to dismiss them, like the good foot soldier that she is for the establishment. Once again, the mainstream media is largely ignoring Chevron's campaign of retaliation against Donziger. The New York Times, Donziger's hometown newspaper, reported nothing in the two days after the verdict and has barely mentioned the case in the past seven years. So again, I want to urge everyone to read the full article in its entirety. But here's the thing that we're seeing on social media. People are pushing back. We're seeing more people stand in solidarity with Stephen Donziger. This case is getting more attention. This case is, again, bringing more, more, more awareness to what kind of system we are in. And that is Donziger right now, Stephen Donziger, like many other heroic activists, whistleblowers, and people who are speaking truth to power, he's, put, he's being put on the chopping block as a warning that if you stand up against big oil, that if you stand up against the corporations, you're going to go to jail. You're going to lose your life. You're going to lose everything that you fought for. Are you not angry? Are you not mad? He did the right thing. He helped out those people in Ecuador. An oil spill the size of Rhode Island. My goodness. Chevron committed a crime. But it's Chevron that's now dictating who is guilty and not guilty. This is a private corporation that's doing this. This is a private corporation that has ties to a lot of lawmakers here in this country. Are you not angry? Are you not upset at what's happening to this man? Now, I wish his team all the best, and I think they do have a chance to push back. I just want to just say this about really how, again, Chevron... Uh, in fact, I want to pull this up from the article. You don't have to pull up the article itself, uh, Faze. But uh, again, we have to recognize what, what's what's happening here. Um, Chevron's attacks against Donziger did not stop after it won the racketeering verdict. The current contempt case began when the oil corporation petitioned Kaplan to access to uh, for access to Donziger's personal computer and cell phone. Donziger declined and arguing that his electronic communications would give Chevron lawyers backdoor access to everything we are planning, thinking, and doing. He said he would wait until the U.S. Court of Appeals heard his argument and that if it required him to, then he would hand over his electronics. Prisca dismissed his defense and convicted him in May, again, without a jury. It's vital to recognize Chevron's law, uh, role in this legal persecution. Its attorneys show up at every Donziger legal case, even the ones that don't directly involve the company. At the same time as Donziger was defending himself against a criminal contempt charge, he was also fighting the effort to take away his license to practice law in New York. The State Bar Association appointed a special officer named John Horan to preside over open hearings, and he found in Donziger's and he found in Donziger's favor. Horan, a foreign prosecutor, had harsh words for Chevron. The extent of Donziger's pursuit by Chevron is so extravagant, and that his point so unnecessarily impunitive, while not a factor in my recommendation, it is nonetheless background to it. Months later, a higher New York State court tossed out Horan's finding and disbarred Donziger. So again, this is a private corporation that is doing everything it can to basically make Steven Donziger the sacrificial sheep. We need to post this on social media. We need to be talking about this because, again, the New York Times, they're not going to talk about it. Other corporate media outlets, they're not going to talk about it, but we are. Steven Donziger did commit a crime. Steven Donziger deserves to be free. Steven Donziger deserves to live the rest of his life without being harassed by a corporation that again, that again committed the crime. Maybe in a better world, we should be looking at, again, these executives and CEOs at Chevron being prosecuted, but they're not. Because again, in the United States, we have legalized bribery and corruption. So thank the, citizens, so thank the United States Supreme Court for them again, passing Citizens United and McCutcheon decision, where money is speech and corporations are people, where corporations like Chevron can buy a politician. Steven Donziger is a hero. And finally, we're seeing some pushback. More people are talking about Steven Donziger, but it's not enough. He needs to be free, and he needs to be free immediately.